Whether you're a new, returning, or veteran player in Lord of the Rings Online, here are 10 keybinds that you will definitely use throughout your journey in Middle Earth. But before I can get into those, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel so much, and I appreciate all of the support. And a real quick disclaimer for you is while we're going through this video, if you find that these key bindings aren't working for you in the game, make sure you go into your Lotro settings and go through your key mapping section. That'll show you all of your key binds, what they're set at, and then you can always change them here too. But now that I've stated that, let's hop right into the video. The first key bind I'm going to mention is how you can select enemies. Now there's two ways that you can actually do this. So if you hit backspace, that's actually going to find all the nearby foes. So whatever's closest to you, that's gonna be found through that keybind. Though you can also hit tab and then tab is essentially marked as your next foe, which essentially means that it's probably the next enemy that you're going to attack. So these are two keybinds that will definitely help you, especially when you're kind of running around and you wanna quickly maneuver through enemy and enemy, mob and mob. Tab for your next foe, backspace for your nearby foes. The second keybind that kind of goes hand in hand with this is the delete key. The delete key is so crucial, especially for questing items that you must find. The delete key will essentially try to tab onto any sort of item that is within range of your character, and more or less, it's typically items that you're looking to pick up. This could be like an NPC is looking for a particular book that they can't find. Maybe you're scouring for apples. Maybe you're trying to run around and find a particular set of jewelry for a NPC for your side quest it really doesn't matter but this will help you probably find your next objective and figure out where to go it's so crucial you use this you're going to be using this so many times when you're stuck and you can't find where you're supposed to go it also works for like finding doors or any entryways that are labeled this is so helpful throughout your journey i am literally like leading you guys to please make life easier on yourself and use the delete key. Now time for the third keybind, which is numlock. Numlock will actually trigger you to auto run. Auto run is so helpful when your fingers are cramping at the keyboard. It's like cruise control. It's literally cruise control for your characters. Another thing I kind of want to follow up with this too is that there is a way to follow people as well. So if you're in a fellowship for an example and you essentially are just kind of going on autopilot, maybe you're going to take a little R&R, &R, but you can actually follow a certain individual's character. You can do that by like right clicking on the portrait and then there is a little menu and that will allow you to follow them. It's super convenient, especially for those quick restroom breaks. We all been there. Gotta go grab a snack. We'll just follow the other person. It's super nice. However, it is a little difficult because that means that person cannot get you stuck on any sort of corners, bridges, make you fall off ledges. You're literally trusting your character's life in someone else's hands. It's a little intimidating. <laughs> but no, seriously, if you're not a terrible leader like me, I always make people's characters fall off the ledge on accident. I, I swear it's an accident. But no, seriously, just double check and make sure that their character is following behind you and that they're not stuck because if you're jumping, I guarantee you that character is not about to jump and they're probably going to be stuck on like a fence or something ridiculous and then it's going to break auto follow and then you're just going to have to sit there and wait until the character gets back. It's just crazy. I said character gets back, but you know what I mean. I'm at the person, okay? Aren't we all characters here? Let's be honest. The fourth keybind I want to talk about is the insert key and that will trigger you to walk. This is so important, especially when you're in certain instances with a certain someone named Sarah Oakhart who wants to take her little sweet time. I'm not bitter about it whatsoever but if you do want to follow along with an npc or someone who's actually going and walking throughout their journey or maybe it's just a short little instance you can always trigger that by hitting the insert key the fifth key bind that i actually just posted a video about which i recommend you all check out is the ui key bind this is control and backslash. And like I said, if this doesn't work for you, make sure you go in the key mapping section. There's actually a whole area where it will show you what your UI selection is. This is how you can rearrange some important things on your screen, like your quest log, you can move that around, or you can even increase, decrease your font sizes and all of that too. But the control and backslash key will actually just trigger more or less just the layout sections of your UI. So make sure you're rearranging everything how you'd like because it will definitely drive you crazy if you have something popping up in the screen that's not supposed to be where it's supposed to be at. It drives me insane. The sixth key I'm gonna mention here is 
X. And no, I am not talking about this new freaking Twitter thing, whatever the heck. I'm talking about the key here, but this will actually allow you to auto turn with any selected enemy that you may have on your screen. Say for an example that I had hit the X key and then I go and I follow the first keybind, which is just hitting tab for instance. I go hit tab, I select the foe, and because you previously had selected X, that will actually make you turn into the direction of that mob. So anytime that you go and you pre-select a mob, that essentially is going to make your whole camera turn in the direction of the foe that you are about to go and defeat. I personally don't really care for this because this actually gives me a little bit of motion sickness. I don't know if it works for any other people, but it is just not my forte. Definitely a two each their own kind of situation. The seventh keybind I wanna mention here is the Alt plus F. 10 keys. Those will actually trigger you to put on an ambient light around your character's little bubble. This should help you with more or less just seeing more of your surroundings around your character. This can only be activated at nighttime, however, so keep that in mind, but it should at least give you a little bit more brightness in that area and aura around your character. The eighth thing I'm gonna mention is a little more particular, and so is the ninth thing, just spoiler alert, but this is for people who are super into outfits and trying to make their awesome cosmetic outfits work for them. The keybinds I wanna mention for this are control and left clicking the mouse. If you hit those keys on a cosmetic item, that'll actually allow you to pull up your dressing room window is what it's called in Lotro. It's essentially like your outfit preview. And then that'll show you what a particular item may look on your character. Not only this, but this actually will allow you to trigger and look through the different dyes that are available and how that dye color would look on your character before you actually permanently dye that outfit piece. It is actually a pretty good lifesaver in those cases because sometimes I dye some things and I'm like, yo, this looks ugly as heck. Why did I do this? And then I have to go re-dye it to fix it and it's just a lot of money and gold down the drain. The ninth keybind here is particular for crafters and this is the ult left click. This can only work on suppliers, however, I want to make that so clear, but this is how you can bulk buy any items for crafting. So as an example, say I'm going in and I talk to a supplier and I just want to buy a bucket of water. But for a farmer, for instance, you definitely have to buy a crap ton of quantity. I'm talking like hundreds and hundreds of things. So once I talk to the supplier and I have the window open and I'm going through the little shop, you can actually hold all and then you're going to see this little icon appear over the top of all of the prices on any of those supplier items. That just shows you that those items can be bought in a quantity. And then once you go and you actually left click it like you're about to buy it, you actually have a small window that'll pop up where you can customize the quantity that you are to buy. They automatically give you like the max amount, which is always 500, or you can do half of that. Or you can always go in and type in how many you need, which is so vital for farmers in particular. This will definitely help you. This honestly goes for any crafting but farmers will definitely need to buy like the max quantity sometimes. I'll also show you the different prices of whatever quantity you put in, and then you can go ahead and buy it. And the 10th thing I'm gonna mention, which I've mentioned in a lot of different videos, but this is how to lock and unlock your quick sock bars. Those are essentially what hold your skills and you wanna make sure that your skills are always locked down in case you are in like the heat of a battle and you're trying to like pop a potion maybe, or you're just trying to click a particular skill and if you hold it and then you drag it just a little off the screen, it's literally going to read that you don't want that skill in the quick slot bar and then it's just gone. And then you have to go in your skill bar while you're trying to fight try to go find the skill that you had just dragged off the screen and it's just so much work. However, I will say while I was doing like research on this video and trying to figure out what the default for locking and unlocking the quick slot bars were, I could not find it, which makes me think that it's just one of those things that you cannot do until you actually customize it. So my key mapping is control and Q. The reason why I did control and Q is because they're both on the same side. So it just makes it so easier to hit the two keys on my keyboard at the same time. But of course you have to go into your key mapping settings in Lotro and go set those up yourself if you wanted to have that 
the same exact key mapping as me, but it's totally up to you. So yeah, I think we about covered it, but if you want more videos like this, let me know down in the comments. The next video I recommend you check out is the UI tutorial. I go through all of the different settings that are available under the UI section, and I talk about which ones I prefer personally, so it might give you some more insight. So I'll see you over there at the next video, and of course, until next time, you stay weird, you weird weirdos. Yeah.